Good morning, Tony Maritato here, licensed physical therapist. And we had a couple questions come in regarding a subacromial decompression. So this is a different surgical procedure than a rotator cuff repair and several others. I wanna share this protocol. This is one of my favorite. It comes from the Brigham and Women's Hospital, which is a department of Harvard Medical. So let's take a look at their post-op protocol so you have an idea of what to expect after a subacromial decompression. Starting with phase one, the immediate goals between day one and day 14 post-op include restoring non-painful range of motion. There's no benefit to pushing through the pain in the first week or two of recovery. We want non-painful range of motion. We want to prevent muscular atrophy and inhibition. So in other words, when there's pain in the shoulder, it reflexively makes my muscles weaker. My, my brain says, if I move, it's going to hurt, so I'm not going to move. We want to reduce the negative impact of that. Uh, decrease pain, decrease inflammation, improve postural awareness. A lot of times patients will come in hiked up, either they're in a sling or they're out of the sling, but they're so guarded and protecting of the shoulder. We want to relax. We want to normalize the posture for what your body type is. We want to mi minimize stress to the healing structure. So that's why you might be in a sling in the beginning. Some surgeons will do two to three days in a sling. Some will do a week independent with activities of daily living. So you're basically safe to do the things that you need to do at home. Your therapist will help make sure that you can do these things properly. And we want to work you out of the sling. So based on what your surgeon finds during the procedure, they'll make a recommendation on how long you're going to be in the sling, when you should be using the sling. But it's not like a rotator cuff repair, in which case after a rotator cuff repair, many patients are in a sling for four to six weeks. After a subacromial decompression, you might only be in the sling for a couple of days to a week. There are precautions. So we should take care during abduction, which is moving the arm out to the side. Um, active range of motion, especially passive range of motion, sometimes used uh, to avoid unnecessary compression of the structures. So when they go in there, they shave the bone, cut off the bone spurs, they, they resect a portion of the bone, we want to protect those raw edges while they're healing. We want to create and reinforce proper movement patterns, right? So when you go to raise the arm, you're not hiking the shoulder to raise the arm, but you're actually lifting the hand properly or as close to normal motion as possible. Range of motion during this phase, you're going to focus on passive range of motion, meaning the therapist, or you can do it yourself passively, moves the arm through the directions of range of motion will progress to assistive active range of motion. Now I've got some videos that show you that on the channel. Go ahead and do a, a search. We'll get to active range of motion where you're doing it on your own. We'll do the pendulums, the pulleys, cane stretches, self stretches. All of that is within this first two weeks post-surgical recovery. Strengthening begins with isometrics, meaning you push all four directions of the shoulder without actual movement in the shoulder. And then we'll progress to TheraBand and some resistive exercises. Again, I have a lot of those videos on the YouTube channel. So during weeks two through six, the goals are going to be regain and improve muscular strength. So first we get the range of motion, then we strengthen the musculature in the new range of motion. We want to normalize arthrokinematics is basically the way the joint moves and functions. We want to improve the neuromuscular control of the shoulder complex. So the shoulder complex includes the bones, the muscles, the everything involved in the shoulder. Uh, we want to make sure everything is moving properly. There's a certain sequence and a certain pattern of movement to the shoulder blade, the humerus, the clavicle, all of that needs to work normally together. And we're going to continue to wean off the sling if you're not out of the sling already. Precautions include overhead activities and heavy lifting. The shoulder might not be ready for that just yet. Exercise examples are going to be isotonic programs using dumbbells. We're going to deal with some um, strengthening the shoulder musculature, including, again, isometric, isotonic. We'll look at some PNF patterns, and that basically is just a coordinated movement, getting multiple muscles, multiple joints working together in natural movement patterns. We'll strengthen the scapulothoracic muscle. So the scapula, which is your shoulder blade, and the thoracic, which is the rib cage, the mid-back. 
we want those muscles like the rhomboids, the muscles behind you, the serratus, the deep muscle underneath the shoulder blade, all of that is need, needs to get stronger to control the movement patterns. We'll initiate upper extremity endurance exercises. So we'll do stuff like an upper body ergometer or a row machine, maybe a Schwinn Aerodyne that's got the reciprocal arm action or an arc trainer with reciprocal arm action. There might be a need for some joint mobilizations, but it's not required if you're gaining range and movement patterns like normal. You can use manual therapy as well to reduce pain during this stage. You can use modalities like cryotherapy, which is basically an ice pack. Some people prefer moist heat. You can use electric stimulation, TENS units, any of that stuff would be fine. And then finally, we're looking at criteria for phase three. Phase three starts at the six week mark and goes through full recovery. So before you progress to phase three, you should have full painless range of motion, meaning full flexion, full external rotation, internal rotation. I can do everything pain-free. No pain or tenderness on exam. So when your therapist is pressing into a couple spots, we wanna make sure those spots are all pain-free. The goal for phase three, is we want to improve strength, power, and endurance. We want to improve neuromuscular control, and we want to prepare the athlete or the adult <laughs> um, to resume their, their high-functioning activities, right? I'm a 46-year-old dad. I'm going to go throw a football with my son. I want to be able to do that safely, have the neuromuscular control within the shoulder, make sure that if I'm accelerating the ball while I throw, I can control the deceleration of the ball, all of that stuff is important. So we're all athletes in and of our own world. We want to make sure we can handle the demands, whether it's pulling a gallon of milk out of the back of the fridge, grabbing something in the backseat of the car, or pitching for you know Major League Baseball. We always want to be able to do what we need to do. We want to emphasize high speed, high energy strengthening exercise. So phase one was range of motion. Phase two was strength usually slow and controlled. Phase three now is about speed, about ballistic movement, about reactivity, impact. Those are all the things that we want to be able to handle. Eccentric exercises, diagonal patterns, workplace ergonomics if you're going back to work or anything that you would do around the house. All of that needs to be handled in phase three. Sample exercises would continue to include dumbbell exercises for the rotator cuff, the deltoid, the rest of the musculature. Progress TheraBand exercises if you're still doing that. 90-90 position is this right here as opposed to down at your side. TheraBand exercises for the scapula thoracic, the bicep. We can also do plyometrics for the rotator cuff. In my clinic, I'll typically have patients do some sort of bounding or reactive drills for the shoulder. PNF diagonal patterns, isokinetics. Um, and continued endurance exercises. Now, most people don't have an isokinetic machine. Don't worry about it. We just need function. Whatever your functional level is, that's what we want to focus on, getting that to the max capacity. Criteria for discharge from therapy. The patient is able to maintain non-painful active range of motion, maximize functional use of the shoulder, maximize strength, endurance, power, and the patient is returned to advanced functional activities. This is an awesome protocol. If you want, I will post the link to this specific protocol in the video description below. If you've had a subacromial decompression, please share your experience in the comments so that other people who might have this procedure can learn from your experience. Otherwise, guys, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.